See, if you're desperate enough, you'll get to him. Oh, I feel it this morning. <laughs> I said, if you're desperate enough, you'll get to him. You'll figure it out. We were in Costa Rica. <laughs> I've got so many Costa Rica stories. And I was in a healing meeting, and I didn't know all the miracles that took place, but one I couldn't help but see. There was a little woman. I mean, I, she was the first woman down, but she couldn't hardly walk. She was walking on a cane, and she was dragging a foot. And she was inching her way toward the front, but her face was, had that determined look. Turn to somebody and say, it's always a woman. <laughs> she was coming the direction. And she looked kind of mad, but it was determination. She was going to get there. She was going to get there. And I looked at her. I said, what'd you come for? She said, I came to get healed. I said, that's the right answer. I put my hand on her. I didn't even know what was wrong with her. I touched her in her knee, touched her on her head, and I said, be healed in the name of Jesus. And I went on to the other 200 people. And when I came back, I saw some movement in the middle. You know how you can catch it out of the corner of your eye. And I looked. There that woman was dancing with the cane on her shoulder. Hallelujah. <laughs> she was, then she started to prance. Then she started to show off. She walked across the front, and she was just strutting. She came for her miracle, and it didn't take her long. She had to inch her way forward, but she drew a miracle out of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you about the power of the anointing? I got to tell you this story. It's so good. I was in Costa Rica. We were trying to set up a crusade, and I was there six months early preaching in as many churches as I could get to in a week. And so that was about, I think I preached eight times that week, twice on the first Sunday, Monday night, Tuesday night. We might have missed one night. And by the time I got to the next Sunday, I didn't want to get out of bed. Can I be real with you? Sunday morning, my, I was brain dead, literally. My, my brain was mush. And I, I had, hardly had two words to say to the pastor. He said, coffee. I said, please. <laughs> I got to the pulpit, and I said, dear Lord, have mercy. I said, if, if you'll just, I'll just open my mouth. You said you'd fill it. And that's what happened. And, man, people got saved and healed in that meeting, anointing. And then I had to go home. <laughs> change clothes, and run to the last meeting of the day, second meeting on a Sunday. I did not want to go to the next meeting. I said, Lord, is there any way you can get me out of this? And then the heavens burst open, and there was torrential downpour. I mean, it was one of those gully washers, like we say in Texas. And then the pastor showed up and said, we're coming in five minutes. I said, you mean they're still coming and all that rain? He said, oh, yeah, they're there. They're waiting for you. I said, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> so I got there, and the pastor of the church, distraught, his name is Christian. Usually he's smiling from ear to ear. Oh, Sister Donna, oh, Sister Donna, you got to pray, you got to pray. What happened? He said, you know that rain that you just came through? Yes. He said, seven families of mine live in cardboard houses, and seven of them lost their homes. They were just washed away by that water. And so I was saying, well, what are you going to do? He says, I don't know what I'm going to do. So here's the pastor, distraught, not knowing what he's going to do. Here's the evangelist, doesn't even want to be there. <laughs> you getting the picture? Okay. <laughs> Somebody say the anointing. the anointing. That's what you need. So I just got up and preached, and in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to get this over with quick. <laughs> preached, built the faith of the people, called for those that wanted to get saved, called for those that wanted to be healed. And because I didn't speak the language, I just kind of went down the line pretty quickly, touched them and believed. But I got to about here, 
in the line. And just like Jesus said, I felt something go out of me into a man. I just felt it go. And I knew something happened. But I just kept going. Got on the bus. Next day I went home. The second day I got a call from Christian, Pastor Christian. Sister Donna, you're not going to believe this miracle. I'm telling you this because a lot of times we think it's about the man or the woman. He says, there was a man that came for healing that night. And he had a stomach filled with tumors. Stage four cancer. He was given a week to live. But he came to get healed. And he said, when Sister Donna laid her hands on him, he felt fire go into his stomach. So he said, he came running to me, and he said, Pastor Christian, he said, I know God just healed me. And he said, I want to repent of my sins. He said, I've been living with a woman for four years. I want to get married. I don't want to live in sin anymore. And he said, will you come and marry us tomorrow? It was about 30, it was about 30 miles away. Pastor Christian said, I'll be there. And he walks into this, this, uh, wedding party and here the man is but he was mad because there was about 150 family members and friends who came nobody brought him a wedding gift because they all thought he was going to die they just came to say goodbye they thought he was just having some type of you know sentimental thing going on and he got mad at me he said Jesus healed me and he said wait right here and he went to find the doctor that took the x-rays. And he said, Doc, I need x-rays right now. Right now, I need x-rays. The doc, what do you need x-rays? You're dying. He said, I want an x-ray now. I'll pay for them. And so the man took him in to get x-rays, and he was in there a long, long time. But finally, he came out with two, two sets of x-rays. He said, listen, I don't know what to tell you? I don't know what happened. But he said, this is what your stomach looked like last week. He said, you see those tumors? You see the cancer? He said, this is what your stomach looks like now. He said, not only are the tumors gone, he says, you've got baby flesh in there. You've got a brand new stomach. <laughs> and he said, that's because Jesus healed me. Hallelujah. Oh, but that's not the best part of the story. He went back with those x-rays to his family members and friends, and he said, look what Jesus did. I told you I was healed. And Pastor Christian led them all to Jesus and planted a church right there in that town. I'm talking about the power of the anointing. It's not dependent on the evangelist. It's not dependent on the pastor. But it takes one who presses into Jesus and says, I'm putting a demand on Today is my day. If I don't get touched today, I will be healed. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, get ready, get ready, get ready. I believe he's releasing it right now. Some of you are feeling it right now.